In this video, we're going to solve some questions involving binary operations. All right. So just watch this video to the end and see how we are going to perform some operations involving binary operations. We're going to talk about the inverse element, the identity element. The first question says, let this be a binary operation defined by a operation b equal to a minus b plus a b squared. That to determine for operation 5. So let's determine that. The definition says a operation b equals a minus b plus a b squared. So if I'm to determine for operation 5, it means that in place of a, I'll write 4. In place of b, I'll write 5. So this will now be 4 minus 5 plus 4 times 5 raised to the power 2. Do you get it? We substituted 4 for a and 5 for b. And this is equal to 4. Okay, we have 4 minus 5 is minus 1. 5 to the power of 2 is 25. 4 times 25 is 100. And that will give us what? 99. So based on this rule of combination, 4 operation 5 is equal to what? 99. Now, see the second question. Let this and this be two binary operations such that a operation b equal to a squared b and a operation b equal to 2a plus b. a and b are members of the set of real numbers. We have to find 2 operation 3 operation 6 operation 7. We have two binary operations here. So to simplify this, see what we are going to do. We we'll first of all break down this one. Then we'll break down this. Then we'll now combine the two results. See, to break this down, we are going to make use of this operation because this year we have it. To break this one down also, we are also going to make use of this. Then to break down the final result, we are going to make use of this. So if I'm saying two operation three, based on this rule of combination, a is two, b is three. So I'm going to write two squared times three. What was 2 squared? That was 4. And what would this give me? 12. So 2 operation 3 is 12. What is 6 operation 7? Using the same rule of combination, okay? We have 6 to the power of 2. That's A is 6 now. Then B is 7. Then times 7. 6 to the power of 2, that's 32. 36 rather times 7. So we have 7 times 6 is 42. Put down 2, take away 4. This is 21 plus 4. That is 25. So 6 operation 7 is 252. It therefore means that 2 operation 3 operation 6 operation 7 is equal to 12 operation 252. Because we have reduced this one, and this is all we got. We reduce this one, and we got this. So we are going to make use of this combination now, this rule, to evaluate 12 operation 252. And that will be A is 12, B is 252. So we have 2 times 12 plus 252. 2 times 12 is 24. Plus what? 252. And what would that be? This is 6. This is 7. And this is 2. 276. So, 2 operation 3, operation 6, operation 7 is equal to 276. The third question is under identity and inverse elements. A binary operation is defined by x operation y equal to x plus y minus 2xy. X and Y are members of the set of real numbers. We have to find the identity element and the inverse of an element under this operation. And we are going to state the elements for which no inverse exists. Before I solve the question, I want to talk about identity elements and inverse elements and the formula that we are going to use for it. Okay? For example, I have a number or an element 2. What will I add to 2 to get 2? What will I multiply by 2 to get 2? 
it is only zero that I will add to two to get two. And if I multiply two by one, I will get two. Zero had no effect in this operation. It is called an identity element or a neutral element. So I just said identity or neutral. So if two is the element, this is the operation, and this is the identity, it means that if I operate an element with the identity element, I am going to obtain the element itself. So the point is that under addition, the identity element is actually zero. So for identity element, it is this. Element operation, identity element will give us the element that we started with. Now this is it for inverse. Let's say we are working with the operation plus under addition. Okay. What will I add to two? Two is the element. What will I add to two to get zero? You know, under addition, the identity element is zero. So what I will add to two to give me zero is minus two. Yes, minus two is the additive inverse of two. Okay. Under multiplication, the identity element is what? Is one. So what will I multiply by two to get one? It is one over two. Because two will cancel two and we have one. So one over two is the multiplicative inverse of two. So that two times one over two is one. So for inverse element, you say that element operation, element inverse. Let me just use inverse. This is element inverse is equal to the identity element. These two formulas are what we need to solve this problem. So this is it for inverse elements and identity elements. Let's now solve the problem before us. X operation Y is equal to X plus Y minus 2Y. X operation Y is equal to X plus Y minus 2Y minus 2XY. We have to find the identity element. The symbol for identity element is E, letter E. Alright. X here is the element. Okay. So X operation E, I'm sorry for the first one, I remember figure one. X operation E is equal to X. That's what the principle says. Element operation identity is equal to element. So since X comes first, X is the element and it is still the element here. So x operation e equal to x. That's what we have here. What now is x operation e? Okay. So we are going to determine x operation e using this definition that we are giving. X is s, but in place of y, we are going to write e in this definition. So anywhere I see x here, I will leave it as x. Anywhere I see y, I will write what e. So that x operation e is equal to x plus e minus 2ex, right? Or minus 2xe. We have replaced y with e. And x plus e minus 2xe, which is x operation e, is equal to what? x. So we now make e the subject of the formula. So e minus 2xe equal to x minus x. And that will give us zero. Zero is here. So if I bring E out from this left hand side, I'll be having one left here, minus two X equal to zero. So dividing both sides by one minus two X to make E the subject, it means that E is equal to zero. So the neutral element or the identity element of this operation is equal to zero. Now, let's answer the second one, the inverse of an element under the operation. And then we'll state the element for which no inverse exists. For inverse element, it is element operation element inverse equal to the identity element. 
So the point is that to determine the inverse element, we need the identity element because it is in the formula for the inverse. Element operation element inverse equal to identity element. So x operation x inverse is equal to e. And we got e as what? Zero. So x operation x inverse is equal to zero. But we can determine x operation x inverse using the rule of combination we are given. So in place of x, I'm still writing x. In place of y, I write what x inverse. So this will be x plus x inverse for y minus 2x times x inverse. You get it? x remains x. y will now be what x inverse. So anyway, we'll see y here. We write x inverse. And x plus x inverse minus 2x into x inverse is equal to x operation x inverse. And that one itself is 0, which is the identity element. So we say this one is equal to 0. So from here, we now make x inverse the subject of the formula. And so we get the inverse element. So uh, if x cross to the right side, it becomes minus x. So we are having x inverse minus 2x into x inverse is equal to minus x. If I factor out x inverse from the left, I'll be having 1 minus 2x equal to minus x. So dividing both sides by 1 minus 2x to make x inverse the subject of the formula, we have minus x all over 1 minus 2x is the inverse element. Make sure you watch this video to the end. I'm going to show you how to determine the inverse of a particular element under the operation. This is just the inverse of any element, all right? The general inverse element. But there are times where the question will be specific. For example, determine the inverse of minus 2 under this operation. So having gotten the inverse element, we can now determine the inverse of any particular element under this particular operation. So, but for this problem, this is the inverse element. And the, the identity element is what? Zero. So, we are going to state the element of x for which no inverse exists. Okay. Look at it. Look at this side. I'm having minus x all over 1 minus 2x. And this entire expression will become undefined when the denominator becomes is zero. This expression here will be undefined when the denominator is zero. You know, if we divide something by zero, it's undefined. So we are trying to guide against any value of x that will make this denominator to be zero. So that particular number, that particular value of x is the value of x that has no inverse under this operation. So to determine that value of x, I will simply set 1 minus 2x equal to 0 and solve for x. It means that minus 2x is equal to minus 1. If this one crosses, then x is equal to 1 over 2. Minus cancel minus, right? Divide both sides by 2. So this is x equal to 1 over 2. It means that if I plug in 1 over 2 for x here, I'll be I'll get 0. That is 1 minus 2 times 1 over 2 in place of x. 2 cancel 2. So we have 1 minus 1. And that will give us what? 0. So if you divide something by 0, it's only fine. It means that 1 over 2 does not have an inverse under this operation. So the element of x for which no inverse exists is 1 over 2. Alright, so this is how to answer problems like this. Keep watching. Let's solve the last question now. An operation is defined on the set of real numbers by m operation n equal to m plus n minus half into mn. We have to determine one, the identity element under the operation. Okay, let's get that first. The principle of identity says, remember, element, m is the element, okay, Element operation identity is equal to what element? So what is M operation E? Let's determine that first. But M operation E 
is equal to this. In place of M, we'll still write M, but in place of N, we'll now use E. So we have M plus E minus half M E. And this M operation E is equal to M. So let's solve this. Let's solve for E here. Let's make E the subject of the formula. Of course, if this M cross to the other side, it becomes a minus. So we have E minus half M E equal to zero. Right? Because M minus M is zero. So the identity element, which is E, if we factor it out from the left hand side, we have this is one, E divided by E is one, and this divided by E is minus half M. So of course E is equal to zero if you divide both sides by one minus half M. So the identity element is zero. For inverse elements, it is element operation element inverse equal to zero equal to the identity element and of course it is zero so let me just put zero here but m operation m inverse based on this rule of combination is m is the m but n is now m inverse so we have m plus m inverse minus half m into m inverse you get it so we now set that right hand side to zero, which is the identity element. So we have m plus m inverse minus half m into m inverse is equal to zero. So let's make m inverse the subject of the formula. If m cross to the other side, we have m inverse minus half m into m inverse equal to minus m. So if I factor out m inverse, we having one here minus half m equal to minus m so dividing both sides by one minus half m the inverse element is minus m all over one minus half m this is the inverse element the question now says we should determine the element or to state the element for which no inverse exists so if we set 1 minus half m equal to 0, it means that minus half m is equal to minus 1, right? Of course, minus cancel minus, if we cross multiply, it means that m is equal to 2. So the element s equal to 2 does not have an inverse under this operation. Because if you plug in 2 here for m, it will be having... 1 minus 2 over 2. 2 over 2 is 1. So that's 1 minus 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. Having the denominator of 0 is undefined. So m equal to 2 does not have an inverse because it will make this expression to be undefined. Okay? The inverse of minus 1 under the operation, let's determine that. This is the general uh, inverse element. So the inverse of minus 1. That's minus 1 inverse. Anywhere we see m here, we just simply put minus 1. That will be minus into minus 1. That's for m here. Divided by 1 minus 1 over 2 into minus 1. So we have plus 1. That's minus minus is a plus. Minus minus is also a plus. So we have 1 plus 1 over 2. And 1 plus 1 over 2 is 3 over 2. So this is simply 1 divided by 3 over 2, and that's 1 times 2 all over 3, which is equal to 2 all over 3. So the inverse of minus 1 under this operation is 2 over 3. This is it for inverse and identity elements, as well as how to simplify uh, simple operations involving binary operations. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Keep supporting by subscribing to this channel, like the video and share it with your friends and your classmates. I'll see you in the next one. Keep watching.